Good morning from a rainy Batumi. Today heading back to Tbilisi, I was able to use this car app here in Georgia to book a driver. And along the way, we're gonna do a couple stops. The first stop is a city that I think is called Seneki. And anytime I tell the locals that I wanna go there, they say there's nothing there, but there's an old Soviet military base there where this guy stole this super advanced MiG-29 fighter plane and he defected. And so we're gonna check that out. And then after that, there's a city called Kutaisi. Near there, there's this abandoned Soviet place, which we're gonna check that out too. And then we'll wind up in Tbilisi in about six, seven, eight hours. So join me on the journey. <laughs> Let's go. You can see how green this part of Georgia is. We're right by the Black Sea coast. Lots and lots of vegetation. I guess they also grow walnuts, cherries, 500 different kinds of grapes. So there's lots of different wines here. Plums, peaches, seen some pomegranate trees around. I got all kinds of fresh breads. In addition to all those fresh fruits and vegetables, believe it or not, I think they also grow, wait for it, potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. The cool thing about this car service, gotrip.ge, it's local just to Georgia here, and you can plan different cities to go to. You get unlimited stops along the way. And by the way, today's trip costs about $150 to go all the way across country from Batumi back to Tbilisi with two stops along the way. Right now we're actually going through a little bit of traffic. We're at this port city of Pati. There's lots of trucks pulling these shipping containers and taking them to wherever. The first stop on the journey is an off the beaten path city. It's not a tourist attraction, it's called Seneki. In 1989, Soviet pilot Captain Alexander Zuyev stole his own MiG-29 and flew it across the Black Sea to Trabzon, Turkey. He was the last important defector of the Cold War. I recently finished reading Zuyev's autobiography, and I figure, since I'm already in Georgia, let's make the trip to his former airbase. And honestly, I have no idea of whether we'll even be able to see the base today. Maybe we'll just see the road <laughs> that goes to the base. In 2008, there was a conflict here with Russia, and the base was seized by Russia at the time. Currently, about 20% of Georgia is occupied by Russia. The main goal of Georgia is to join the European Union, which would obviously give them more backing on the world stage. People here think a lot about being annexed by Russia. When Georgia was in the USSR, Seneki Air Base used to be called Mika Tsikhakaya Air Base, or Ruslan Air Base. I think it was named after the head of the Communist Party here in Georgia. After I finished reading the book, I was surprised how much it gave me to think about. For example, right here, you open the inside cover, there's some reviews. Fulcrum is a must read for anyone who wants to know why the Soviet Union collapsed. A powerful testament to the internal forces that brought down the mighty Russian bear. In the book, he talks about going to school, joining the wrestling team, working hard to get in shape. Eventually, he won a wrestling championship. He joined the military, went to flight school, and was at the top of his class, flying the most advanced fighter jet in the Soviet Union at the time, the MiG-29. But then he talks about how he became disillusioned with the Soviet Union. For example, Chernobyl, he said that he saw a story in the state paper. It was just a paragraph that said there was an accident, but everything is under control. And he said those words stuck with him and it felt like there was something off about that. He talked to his mom about it and she said, do you know what they are paying people to go to Chernobyl to work there and to help? And she goes, 350 rubles per day. And 350 rubles was a very good monthly salary at the time. And both him and his mom knew that there was something that they weren't being told. Also, they talk about how people were finding mass graves from the Stalin times. He also talks about a Korean air flight that was shot down by the Russians. 10 days before that flight, Arctic gale knocked down the radars on the Kamchatka Peninsula, the key warning radar. They were not operational. Moscow knew about this fact. Moscow made a big pressure on the local authorities to fix them. They fixed some of them, but not all of them. So they didn't have full coverage of that airspace. But they reported to Moscow that they fixed those radars. So They lied to Moscow? Yeah, they lied to Moscow. 269 people died yes. because the radar was, was down and because some people lied to Moscow. Lied to Moscow trying to save their ass. Let's put them this way. 
I was living in a country that lied to me about about all justice, about all history of the Soviet Union. Certainly there were a lot of things that led him and many others to kind of lose faith in their government. For him, the final nail in the coffin was, so he was stationed here in Georgia and he also spent a lot of time in Tbilisi. There was a political demonstration in Tbilisi where the military was sent in and the official story was the crowd had attacked, but he talked to his friends there and they said that the military came in and just started attacking. People demonstrated for democratic changes. They were peaceful demonstrators. I was shocked to the depth of my soul by the brutal slaughter that the army inflicted on the defenseless people. I saw the pictures of the slashed women. And then he heard the reports that maybe his division would be called upon to put down any other uprising. He knew he didn't want to be a part of that. He felt the military was there to protect the people, not to be used against them. So not only did he decide to steal this MiG-29 in effect, but actually he decided that he was going to destroy the other MiGs that were at this air base. Well, this is the place. There's a market right here, and then some military housing over there, and then the entrance, and just open fields, and some cows over here. It smells like cows. And this is where he starts the book. Mika Tchachkaya, Ruslan Air Base, May 20th, 1989, 0520 hours. It was just after dawn, right over there, by the way, on a clear spring morning in the Soviet Socialist Republic of Georgia. In half an hour, I would be in Turkey, having escaped from the Soviet Union aboard one of my country's most advanced fighters. But now I had to concentrate on the task at hand, disarming and binding Corporal Chomayev. At this point in the story, he's going on to the apron, and he has to overpower the guard that's on the apron. But before this, he's actually given tranquilizers to the rest of his comrades by baking a strawberry cake with tranquilizers in the frosting and feeding it to them. He's also broken off maybe a key or pins in the armory padlock so that they can't get to their weapons. He's taken keys for the vehicles and thrown them into the forest, maybe, who knows, somewhere around here. And then at this point, he just has to overpower this guard. And remember, Zuyev won a wrestling championship, so he thought it would be pretty easy to overpower this guy. I was pretty confident that it would be so easy to die them up. You wouldn't believe this, but he was a wrestler too. <laughs> He was pretty well, good. You can laugh about it, but he almost did you in. Yeah, but what the heck. They end up struggling, they go for their guns, and Zuyev ends up shooting the officer who survived. Zuyev gets shot in the arm, he gets into his plane injured, he's able to take off here, ascend at 30 degrees into the sky, he jettisons his fuel tank, because in order to use the machine gun, you have to jettison the extra fuel tank. So he jettisons the fuel tank, he turns around to do a 30 degree descent on the base because now his intention is to do a machine gun run on the rest of the MiGs that are on the ramp. He can't get the gun to fire, so he just does a flyby, he rocks his wings, and he heads to Turkey under full military power. <laughs> so I imagine hearing the roar of that MiG and seeing it in the sky overhead. What a story. We're now in the city center of Seneki, Behind me, maybe a theater, I'm not sure. There's a fountain here that's not really working. There's no water, only a deck of cards and maybe a couple pieces of fruit. So I guess this is just sort of a normal Georgian city. Anyway, let's get back in the car. I think it's about two hours to Kutaisi. drove for about an hour and now I'm standing here in Skaltuba, which is near Kutaisi. And as you can see, there's this abandoned spa behind us. This spa was a favorite of Joseph Stalin. Apparently he came here and he had a leg ailment and he dipped in these waters here and then he felt better. So he ordered the expansion of this area. It's now completely abandoned. I'm just gonna walk inside this lower entrance here. Staircases on either side. This place is very grand. You can see Mother Nature slowly starting to reclaim this area. Obviously the railings here are totally gone. So we go up maybe three or four 
or five flights here. This place is huge. And the stairs go up to a small door and then we can, I guess, walk around on this terrace. Wow, so the roofing, kind of the tart over roofing here, obviously that's not working so well anymore and plenty of uh, trees starting to come through the ceiling in some places, some water dripping through the ceiling. The entrance is here and then you can see this overlooks into this main courtyard, which is now being completely taken over by trees and shrubs. The thing I find really interesting about these ruins is, I mean, not only do they just look really amazing, um, like, like a lot of ruins do. Here's just a elevator shaft, maybe? Anyway, what I find really interesting about stuff like this, the Soviet stuff, is this is relics and artifacts to a failed empire. And it really was an empire at the time. I mean, you have this architecture, you have propaganda saying, we're the best, trust us. And the country was the biggest in the world and obviously it all collapsed. And here's the physical manifestation of that collapse. So I'm continuing to make my way to the back of the main bathhouse, I guess I'll call it. As I look at the opening here, maybe it used to be a big door, with some stairs going down. I smell some fish, maybe it used to be a balcony rather, but I smell some fish, I think, from the people that are living here. So now I'm at the back of the main structure with the front over there, then there's this pool right here. And I would assume that right here, this would be kind of an indoor bathhouse. Now it's all grass and plants. Maybe it was a sauna or something. I mean, now we're back into what looks like a shower area, or at least there's these bathroom tiles on the wall. Maybe this was the sauna. I don't know. As I'm walking through here, I just think, wow, again, it is so interesting and crazy and also kind of disappointing to think that such a massive building that had all this tile and you know it looks really nice when you come through that entryway and i imagine the whole thing was really nice and now it's nothing really i mean now it's just a place that's crumbling all these rocks falling down and it's a pit of rubble <laughs> where i'm standing and yeah, this place is gone, just like I guess you could say the government that built it is gone. Just look at this column, I don't know, is this like a solid marble column, but it feels pretty solid and like I said, I'm sure this place would be so beautiful. It's honestly, it's a shame that it's in the condition that it is. Here you can see, and actually I can hear a radio or a TV or something, and then if you look here you can see there's an antenna and there's a wire strung out the window. So it looks like somebody's living there. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this place. This abandoned spa, this abandoned Soviet spa. Arrived here in Kutaisi, kind of in the, I don't know if this is the exact center, but a little bit of a park behind me. And I think school just got out. Lots of students seem to be walking around. I'm on this nice walk bridge here, kind of a, I don't know, maybe a copper plated floor perhaps. And then the river looks kind of low. Maybe this is the floor of the river, but it's kind of unique looking. See this kind of rock formation here. And then also going over the river, you can see there's a cable car right here as well. I think it's just a quick stretch of the legs here in Kutaisi. We'll go back in the car after we've kind of seen the river and walked across the bridge. Right outside of Kutaisi, we made a pit stop. There's a famous mineral spring here, I think. So we're gonna get some water, fill up my bottle.
tastes kind of like iron. It's got a little bit of iron in it, I think. Back on the road. It's about three hours and 15 minutes, I think, to Tbilisi. I guess there's a couple of regions where they have this famous mineral water, and the one that we just got here is Narzan, and each one has its own taste. So this one tastes like Narzan. So I see there's this major construction project of this road being built and tunnels being drilled through the mountain. The driver says it's the new autobahn being built, which is connecting China to Europe. So quite the major undertaking. It is just so green here and hilly. It's all covered with trees. Continuing to see the Autobahn here, and uh, apparently it's going to also connect to Tbilisi and Batumi, and then it'll reduce the trip, the trip that we're taking, from six hours down to three hours. Well, you can see the landscape has changed a little bit as we're getting closer to Tbilisi. Tbilisi is at an elevation between 1,200, I think, at its lowest, and 2,500 at its highest. Obviously, Batumi is at sea level. Well, it's seven o'clock. We arrived back here in my neighborhood in Tbilisi. The rain let up for a little bit. Now it's coming back down. We left this morning at 10 a.m. So it was about a nine hour journey. It cost $150, which included the tip. And we saw all kinds of stuff all across Georgia and drove across the entire country, basically. So let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of Georgia. As always, I'd love to hear from you in the comments and I will talk to you there. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. As they say here, Madloba. See you soon.